Herbert Thies, the CEO of Volkswagen, is stepping down from his role at the company to be replaced by Oliver Bloom, who had previously led Porsche. What happened next isn't immediately clear. Source broke the story, but a new report adds to the mystery. Luckily for you, Fortune Fast Laner, we've prepared all the things you need to know about Herbert Thies, CEO of Volkswagen, and why he has been forced out. Want to know the story? Keep watching this video. Volkswagen Group's CEO Dr. Herbert Thies unexpectedly announced his departure last Friday, just days after the group's supervisory board met, with the question of his continued leadership on the agenda. Thies will step down on September 1, with Porsche CEO Oliver Bloom set to take over the role of chairman of the Group Board of Management in Volkswagen AG while also continuing to hold his post as chairman of the board for Dr. LNG HCF Porsche AG. These was appointed as the chairman of the board of management at Volkswagen AG in April 2018. He assumed his board posts on July 1, 2015, just weeks before the breakout of the VW diesel crisis. One of the industry's highest paid executives, these still managed to catch some German auto industry observers off guard in early 2018. After the shakeup became public, he kept his role for another three years based on his contract. His departure was seen as having been brewing for some time. Some industry watchers pointed to these precarious political influence and outsider status at the automaker and the loss of crucial support from a number of board backers, including the Porsche and Peach families. Volkswagen has said it will spend about 89 billion euros on EV development over the next five years, with the goal of selling that number to represent a quarter of its sales by 2026. The number of battery EVs sold by VW nearly doubled in 2021, reaching 453,000 globally, falling behind only Tesla and General Motors for the top spot. However, most of GM's sales came from a joint venture partnership with China. VW outpaced all other automakers, including Tesla, in European EV sales at 310,000 vehicles. This shift by CEO these underlined the company's focus on electrified cars and even more importantly, electrified trucks. Tesla still sold more than twice as many pure EVs as VW in 2021. With a 20% increase in sales from last year, these vehicles reached 5% of their total sales numbers which would make them one of the largest producers in North America. And then, Volkswagen issued a laudatory note for Dees in announcing his departure. However, they didn't mention any costs. During his tenure as chairman of the board of management of the Volkswagen Passenger Cars brand and as chairman of the group board of management, Herbert Dees continued to make important contributions to shaping the future for our company, said Hans Dieter Posch, chairman of the supervisory board. The group is in a better position now than it has been in years. Its past successes are bolstered by new strategies and innovative capabilities. These impressively implemented change across an ocean of turmoil, implementing an entirely new strategy from leadership. These did indeed steer the automaker through turbulent waters. Turmoil-filled times are coming for Volkswagen as it loses market share to Toyota. White Volkswagen may be further along than most traditional automakers in the planned switch to electric vehicles, its sales have fallen further behind that of Toyota. With 10.5 million cars sold in 2021, Toyota is outpacing Volkswagen by more than 1.5 million. In 2019, before the pandemic and with 9.9 .9 million cars sold, Volkswagen had edged out Toyota by 200,000 cars. Now, here's a timeline of the diesel crisis. 
the first half of Dees' tenure at Volkswagen, where he arrived in 2015 from BMW, was marked almost entirely by the fallout from the Volkswagen diesel scandal, which broke in the fall of 2015 and sparked a massive vehicle buyback program in the US, costing the automaker over $20 billion. The diesel crisis affected not just Volkswagen in the US, but several brands including Audi, Porsche, Skoda, and even Mercedes-Benz, prompting lawsuits in multiple countries and a series of costly retrofits and remedial programs. The crisis had largely abated by 2018, but had cost the automaker a significant sum, in addition to the damage to its reputation. With many problems, some of which stemmed from decades of ineffectiveness and bad company decisions, Thus had to handle one of the largest scandals in German auto history. The company's significant marked Dies's second half at Volkswagen, but slow turn to electrification, which culminated in the launch of new EVs under the ID brand starting in 2019 and the construction of Zwickau as a hub for EV production just days before the outbreak of the coronavirus pandemic. Volkswagen had been transitioning electrics with a range of under 150 miles before the arrival of the MEB platform. But this platform led to the debut of two new electric cars that produce a range of over 300 miles. The first major entry was made after it was too late, so Tesla took market share and spun its wheels to catch up in Germany and other European markets. During the past few years, Dees oversaw the efforts of Volkswagen to change production toward electrics by 2020. Much of this effort was also focused on handling political considerations related to this process and ensuring jobs continue to be sustained throughout its transformation. Tesla CEO Elon Musk had a friendly relationship with Herbert Dees. These often invited Musk to give a remote talk to his executives, who are learning the Uber-like startup approach to Tesla's electric cars business. In a statement discussing Herbert D's departure from Volkswagen, the company mentioned innovative product ideas, redesigned product portfolios, and established the clear focus on electromobility. In addition to this change of thought, innovative platform-based approaches have been initiated such as recently with battery cells as well as mobility services. Despite a lot of progress having been made with electric cars, industry observers and financial analysts have expressed concern that conservative automaker Volkswagen wasn't moving fast enough in crucial directions from software. Volkswagen's in-house software division, Cariad, has been seen as creating significant drag and pushing back the launches of several important EVs. Indications of lacking the needed progress by Cariad can be seen as a cause for his sudden departure from the company, which may have been caused due to years and years-long delay for key models such as Autonom. It would not be surprising if months and years down the road, Cariad's leadership issues become one of the reasons that prompted a change in leadership and brought about a sudden departure from responsibility with Cariad. In recent months, the delays at Volkswagen's in-house software division, Cariad, proved to be more serious than was previously believed. These last two years were shaped by the stresses of the pandemic and the turmoil among suppliers that have materialized because of this. Volkswagen's plant operations experienced downtime and delays in the first year, leading to a tough balance between demand for the ID.3 hatch and the storage of production for its diesel engine. The outbreak of war in Ukraine shuttered several key suppliers, ones that produce wiring harnesses for other European-produced Volkswagen Group vehicles which added additional fiscal strain on the German automaker. The excitement surrounding the pandemic itself had spurred a sharp rise in demand for electric vehicles that caught Volkswagen off guard as it struggled to meet orders for the hatchback. 
With the current demand for electric cars, Tesla built an all-electric plant outside of Berlin and was able to compete with the German automakers on their own turf. The new plant was built during the pandemic, making it one of the fastest ever time to market. At the same time, the unexpected challenges and events Volkswagen faced have been extraordinarily tough for the company to handle. One of those was the controversial outcome of what happened during VIP test drives in Europe. CEO Herbert Lees came under fire and received criticism due to some comments he made, which led to a political scandal in Lower Saxony, where Volkswagen is located. The CEO's uneasy relationship with manufacturing labor unions also became a common subject of discussion between politicians and the consumers who buy the cars. These will leave his role at Porsche and will work in the Volkswagen Group while Bloom, who has been with the company since 1994 and previously held positions at Audi, Seat and Volkswagen Group brands, as well as CEO of Porsche, will take over his position. Oliver Bloom has proved his operational and strategic skills in various positions within the group and in several brands and has managed Porsche AG from a financial, technological, and cultural standpoint with great success for seven years running. From the Supervisory's board's point of view, he is now the right person to lead the group and to enhance further its customers' focus and the positioning of its brands and products. Mr. Hans-Dieter Posch, chairman of the supervisory board of Porsche AG, announced that they believe Oliver Bloom is best suited to take charge as CEO. So it could be concluded that Thies was removed from his position due to severe software development delays and setbacks for a new line of Porsches, Bentleys, and Audis. Adding insult to injury, buggy software was what originally delivered the Volkswagen ID range of electric cars. His leadership style and lack of popularity were two of the reasons he was eventually told his services were no longer necessary, source reports. With a vision to transform the company into an electric vehicle leader, he repeatedly clashed with labor leaders and accused Volkswagen of raising behind a Tesla to cut thousands of jobs. But failures in the company's Cariad unit eventually eroded Deez's support from the powerful Porsche and Peach families that called the shots. In December, Volkswagen overhauled its management board and made these less involved in day-to-day -day operations. He hasn't been able to make the problems go away yet. There have been a lot of management changes so far, but Deez has not yet been able to solve the issues. This delay in Porsche plan to release an electric vehicle has brought about a lot of problems for the company. The car hasn't been rolling out as quickly as it should and the company is looking to go public in 2019. Audi has also announced that their entire lineup of electric cars has been pushed back two years to 2027 while Bentley's plan to go all-electric by the end of this decade is on life support. All they have left is Germany. It has been reported that these, who was dismissed as CEO of the Volkswagen Audi Group, may have been at fault for the company's scandalous fall. Volkswagen shares are lagging under Chief Executive Officer Dr. Herbert Thies and have only gained 10% under his management since he was named the CEO in 2018, whereas Toyota stock is up by 60%. And in the first six months of 2019, Volkswagen shares have particularly declined by 28%. Dees was at the forefront of the EV revolution at VW. His spending plan called for investing $91 billion in software and EVs over the next half a decade, according to Source. Just a year ago, the automaker committed to hiring 10,000 people just in software operations. We may never know everything that was said in the meeting at Volkswagen that ended Dee's reign as CEO. This new twist of faith is somewhat ironic and happened just last November when we reported that Dee's had survived a vote of confidence decision by the board. With Dee's departure, Volkswagen will face many challenges. 
Of course, the company has no solution for them, and everyone is uncertain about how much energy costs will go up and how the chip market will change. It's unclear what will come next for these and Volkswagen, but an era is about to begin for both. That's it for this video, Fortune Fast Laner. Remember to subscribe to our channel, and if you feel like we've delivered value, please share this video with one person. That's right, just one person as a token of your appreciation for the hard work we put into making content that educates and helps you on your mission of building your own fortune. Remember, you can watch video after video, but it isn't until you actually take action that you'll start to see results. See you soon!